Hey Freedom Gorillas, Holosense Night Vision and Thermal are finally both on freedomgorilla.com. We just got our first batch of the Thermal Optics. And to be honest with you, I was waiting to make a video on both of them just until I got the Thermal and could test both of them out side by side. Now I did read the manuals of both of these. They are very thick. Um, when I first read through it, I learned a lot, but I didn't retain a lot of the information. So I had to read through it again. I played with the optics. I even reached out to Holosense directly to get all the information I possibly could about these two optics for today's video. And I know for a lot of people, both these optics will be confusing at first uh, because there's more buttons than any other Holosun on there and these buttons do different stuff, whether you tap or hold it, um, as well as this is probably most people's first introduction to night vision and thermal, especially at the price points of $1,000 and $1,600. This is probably the mainstream introduction into most people I'd imagine. So in today's video, we're gonna cover how to use the red dot function on both of these optics, how to use the night vision, how to use the thermal, as well as different use cases and real life examples as well. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to turn the night vision or thermal on. And to do that, we are going to take it out of the box, obviously, and there's a little tray here it has a little pop-up and we're just going to twist it open. I already got it started. And this is the battery tray. Now it does come with two rechargeable 18350 batteries. We're gonna make sure that the positive is being placed in and the negative will be uh, pointing towards us. So we'll put both of those in there and then we will tighten this by just simply twisting it. Now in an observation mode, the night vision can last for eight hours and then using its full function, it will last for six hours. The thermal is going to last for 10 hours of battery life and both of these are going to last for 50,000 hours with the red dot. And then one last additional note for the battery, it does come with the charger and to charge that, you're going to lift up this cover here and then just plug it in and wait. So one thing I do wanna highlight before we get into showing you how to use the red dot is you don't have to have a dedicated night vision or thermal rifle anymore. This combines that technology plus the red dot. So you're still able to use this as a normal red dot, just like you would a AIMS or 510C. Now we're gonna start with talking about the MRS reticle, and this is something you should be very familiar with. The MRS reticle is just like all the other rifle hollows and optics. It's a two MOA dot with a 65 MOA circle. And the way you can toggle that is pressing the minus button. And then if you hold that in, you go to just the two MOA dot, hold that in again, going to just the 65 MOA circle. And then one more time, you're back to the MRS reticle. Now for everything with the red dot, you will only be using these two buttons. The thermal and night vision, use these buttons. So to turn the red dot on, you're gonna press either the plus or minus, it turns on. To change the brightness level, to brighten it, you're obviously pressing the plus. To lower it, you're pressing the minus button. And finally, to turn off the red dot, you're going to press the plus and minus at the same time, and it will turn off. Now, just some other things you'd want to know about the red dot. There is no solar panel on either the night vision or thermal, so you only have manual mode and lockout mode. To turn it into lockout mode, you're going to hold the plus button, and then if you press any of these other buttons, nothing will happen. To get out of lockout mode, you're gonna press and hold the plus button again for a couple seconds. You'll see the reticle blink, and now you're back in manual mode. In manual mode, you're able to change the brightness. And the last thing I wanna mention about these red dots is it does have shake awake. So after 10 minutes of inactivity, the red dot will turn off, and then when you pick it back up, it turns on automatically. If you wanna change that 10 minute timer, we have a whole video on how to do that. I'll link that in the description. All right, now let's talk about the night vision and thermal, and this is where things get interesting. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to turn on the night vision and thermal. First thing to know is if you have the thermal, you obviously just have to lift that cap up. For the night vision, it's not necessary. So both of these do have this power button at the top here. It's the same one, and you're just going to light press it, and then it will do its thing and turn on. And to turn it off, you're basically going to press the power button again for two seconds and it's gonna power off. And one thing I do wanna tell people about, cause it tricked me, is if you see this blinking red light at the top, it's in like a sleep mode. And that's only because you held the button for too long. So holding this off is basically like the lockout mode, right? So we're gonna hold that for another couple seconds here until the blinking stops. And uh, once it stops, you'll be able to just light press it instead of holding it 
and then it should just turn on and do its thing. Okay, now let's get to the buttons at the top of the night vision and thermal. So each button here is gonna do something different, obviously, but it's also going to do something different whether you tap it or you hold it in. So each button has two different functions and we'll cover all of those. All right, so first we're gonna start with the magnification button. That one's obviously the simplest and if you can guess it, if you press that, it increases the magnification. Now on the thermal only, it has a one, three, and five times magnification. And the night vision only has a one, two, four, and eight times magnification. And for either optic, if you hold the magnifier button down, it'll just refresh the magnification sensor, which could help clear up any issues if the view looks off. Okay, so next up we're gonna cover the brightness button. And essentially what that's gonna do is change the brightness of the night vision or thermal. There are six different settings depending on uh, what you want for that level of brightness on that screen. All right, now for the thermal only, not the night vision, just the thermal, when you hold this in, you're gonna change to different image modes. So you have four different image modes. There is white hot, highlight, outline, and then black hot. White hot is going to be turned on automatically. And then you can just keep pressing that um, to cycle through those. In my honest opinion, I think white hot or black hot are gonna be the most useful. Okay, next up we have the OK button. So when you press the OK button, you get the menu, right? So you can go through and toggle these with the up and down and pressing OK. What I think most people will use this button for is the calibration with the red dot. So first thing you're gonna do is you're going to get the red dot zeroed in. Once you get the red dot zeroed in, you can then calibrate the night vision or thermal reticle to that red dot. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the calibration, we're gonna click reticle, and then we're going to turn on the red dots. So right there is the night vision reticle, and right here is the red dot reticle. So if we wanted to, once we zeroed this, we can then move that uh, night vision or thermal reticle to where the red dot reticle is lined up. So both of them are then zeroed together. Okay, and essentially here, if we wanted to move the reticle, there's horizontal and vertical. So horizontally, you see that number there? If we press a button, it will change. And to get out of this setting, you're going to hold the OK button. Holding the OK button acts like a back button and we'll get out of that setting as well. Okay, next we have the up button and this works for both of the optics. So if you press the up button, you'll see this blink. It's gonna take a picture. The optics both have an internal 32 gigabyte uh, hard drive and you're able to record directly onto the optic and then transfer the footage to your computer later. So tapping it will take a picture and then holding the up button actually starts recording. And to turn off the recording, you're gonna to have to hold the up button again. Once it starts recording, you'll see this blink blue. All right, and this is how you upload the photos and videos. So essentially you do need a USB. Um, so I have a little dongle here for my MacBook. So we are going to get the charger. You're going to put the USB up to your computer. You're going to take the charging port here and just lift that up, put the charging cable on it. It's going to be green. You're going to turn on the optic and then on the screen on your computer, it will say device found and you're able to then take everything from the device. Okay, and lastly, we have the down button. So the down button is going to change the brightness level of that reticle and there's three different levels and then obviously turning it off. So you can press it four times and just cycle through those reticles. Now to change the reticle of the night vision and thermal, you're going to hold the down button and then you can go through these options right here to pick a reticle that you prefer. Okay, and just so you know, when you do zoom in, the reticle also adjusts towards that. Now there are different reticle options like I just mentioned. So depending on what you like um, is what reticle you'll set it at. So I just wanna go over the overall specs, like the weight and the breakdown and such like that. So overall, these optics are identical. The window size is 1.25 by 0.98 inches, very similar to the Ames reticle. And overall, it's 3.7 inches long, 2.2 inches wide, and 3.5 inches tall, and weighs 18.5 ounces. So both optics are rated for an IP67 waterproof rating, so it could be submerged up to a meter for 30 minutes without any issues. Both of them are made of 775 T6 aluminum, just like the other Holosun optics, which is great to see. 
and the night vision has a 60 frame rates per second. The thermal has 50 frame rates per second, which is still great. The frame rates per second is a measure of how many individual images or frames the optic displays per second. The higher frame rate, like 60, makes everything look smooth, especially when you're moving or tracking a moving target. All right, in this section, I'm gonna give you more information about the night vision and thermal. That way you can understand the pros and cons that each one has to offer. Okay, so really the main difference between these two things, we'll start with the night vision. So with night vision, it's just amplifying the surrounding light around you. So typically, the stars and the moon are bright enough for the night vision to pick up. If you're in a completely dark room, it is going to struggle to see. To counteract that, you can do an infrared illuminator. Holosun does have a couple of options there, but check with your state and local laws before attaching an illuminator to a rifle uh, with, with night vision. And like another thing about that, if you're looking at it from like a tactical standpoint, if you're using an infrared illuminator for your night vision device, anyone else using a night vision device will also be able to see that you're using an infrared illuminator. Um, so that might defeat the purpose, but depending on what you're doing with it, I guess, if you're hunting and you just need it, totally fine, no issue there. And the main thing with the night vision devices is it picks up detail, right? So you're looking at a broad scene, it'll pick up a bunch of detail. So if you are hunting, you're able to identify what that object is, assuming you can see the movement in here, um, you're able to identify what that object is. Whereas with the thermal, it's picking up heat signature. So you will see the blob of heat, but you're not gonna be able to see the details. On the night vision, you're able to see things such as facial features, um, if it has fur, you're able to identify on the night vision is basically what I'm trying to get across. For the night vision, I think this would be great for close to medium range. So I'd say like 100, maybe 150 yards might be pushing it, but for medium to close range, if you're trying to identify. Because once you get further out there, unless you're really looking on the screen, typically the stuff starts to blend in with the background. All right, now we have thermal. So thermal acts differently than night vision, obviously. Thermal is not doing anything based with light. It is solely looking at the heat signatures. So if you're in a completely dark room, the night vision might struggle without that infrared illuminator, but with thermal, it doesn't matter. It's picking up the heat signatures. So thermal really shines at finding long range uh, game. So it doesn't matter if it's daylight, it could still use thermal. Um, doesn't matter if it's rain or foggy outside, thermal's going to work and pick up the heat signatures of whatever you're tracking. So for example, we saw a couple of deer in a farmer's field. One deer was about 30 yards out and the other three deer were about 200 yards out. On the night vision, I couldn't see the deer at 200 yards out and it was really hard to see with the, the deer at 30 yards out. With thermal, it picked everything up beautifully. Um, no issues whatsoever picking up that deer at 200 yards out. And that was super impressive to me at least because I didn't know how far this would pick it up. And also, if you're tracking something that's behind bushes or anything like that, you'll still be able to see it on the thermal, whereas it'll start to blend in on the night vision. So really final thoughts here is, if you're primarily identifying animals or targets at a closer range, night vision could be the way to go. If you want something that can spot heat signatures no matter what, thermal is gonna be your friend here. Now let's go into the pros and cons of each night vision and thermal. So the pros for night vision is it gives you detailed imaging so you can see stuff in a more realistic detail like fur patterns or the animal shapes or even the face of the animal. It has better depth perception as well. You're able to judge better how far distances are. It gives you a wider field of view. Again, it's looking for overall, uh, whereas the thermal is looking at a more focused area for heat signatures. And then night vision is also the more affordable option, about $600 less than the thermal. Now for the cons, it does need light to work. And if you're in complete darkness and have to use an infrared illuminator, those do cost money. So that's an extra cost to use this. Night vision can also reveal your position if you're using an infrared illuminator, if you're doing something tactically and you don't wanna give away your position, but you have to use that. Anyone else with a night vision optic will be able to see that infrared illuminator as well. And it also has limited use in weather. Uh, snow, rain, fog can all affect the night vision because it's depending on light. And again, it's sensitive to light. This is the last con. 
It's sensitive to light. So a sudden bright light burst, uh, like someone shining a flashlight on you, could affect the optic and momentarily like blind the optic. And then for thermal pros, it can see in complete darkness. So obviously it doesn't need that infrared illuminator. It spots animals very easily uh, because it's looking at the heat signature, even if they're high in bushes or in tall grass, which would defeat the night vision unless you see movement. Um, this performs in all weather condition, because again, it's not going off a of light, it's going off a of heat. And it's better for longer range detection. You're definitely able to see way farther out with the thermal than the night vision. And this also tracks residual heat. So if an animal moves out of view, you can often see that residual heat left on the ground to help with tracking. Now some cons is it does have less detailed image. It does cost more. Again, this is $600 more than the night vision. And lastly, it has a narrower field of view. The thermal is often looking at a smaller field of view because it's looking for heat signatures rather than an overall broad view of the scene. Hey Freedom Grillers, it is pitch black outside. We have the new Holosun Thermal and Night Vision. We are testing both of them out. Um, stay tuned, it's going dark. So the first test we wanted to do here was actually showing on night vision what happens when you open up your phone. So as Paul opens up his phone here, you'll see that it scans his face with infrared and night vision actually is able to catch that and anyone using night vision surrounding you will also be able to see that. So for this next test, I had Paul walk up a trail on the forest. On the thermal, he was able to walk quite a distance and through a lot of brush and we were still able to see him. Whereas on the night vision, I had him turn on the flashlight and he didn't get nearly as far just because I couldn't see him on the night vision device. Now on the recording, it does look a little bit easier to track him, so that is good to see. For this test, we had Paul walk behind a glass door. For those of you who don't know, glass is night vision's basically kryptonite. You cannot see behind it. But for night vision, there is no issue seeing behind it. Again, both of these are found at freedomgorilla.com. Thank you for watching today's video. Leave a comment below letting us know which one you prefer. And if you have any questions on either of these optics or want us to perform more tests, let us know in the comments, we'll do it. Thanks for watching today's video. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.